Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There is, there is a hymn of gratitude that includes these words. God looks beyond my thoughts and saw my need. I shall forever lift my eyes. The God that we believe in is a consoling God for us who today continue our journey as pilgrims on the way. God has promised to us and to all people a new heaven and a new earth for today and at our horizon. Theologian and Old Testament scholar Dr. Kristen Winland writes, the message given is confident and hopeful. Here is your God. Here is a God who comes to feed the flock, uh, to gather the lambs, to lead the mother sheep, to bring comfort. Here is God in whom one may have hope. This captures both the deep meaning of the hymn, I find, and the passage from our gospel, our, our lesson today from Isaiah. God looks beyond our thoughts and saw our need. May we forever lift up our eyes. Isaiah writes in his prophecy, Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Isaiah's great prophecy continues with God's invitation, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Here's God's invitation to take a different tack to comfort and to speak tenderly to each other. Isaiah's vision is more than freedom. This is a prophetic Christology, an invitation to imagine a Christ who came and will come again. Christ, the bringer of a new exodus, what scholar Ricky Watts calls an Isaiah uh, 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 exodus. And it is an eschatological comfort, if you will. Jesus is the embodiment of Exodus. He not only brings euangelion, that, that word for the gospel, that Greek word for the gospel, but he is the gospel. God saw our need and God met it in the person of Christ Jesus. It is a message of hope for all people and all nations. Our God, you see, the God who is greater than any worldly authority or power prophesies to us, uh, prophesies to us in our own bondage and captivity. Isaiah, just as Isaiah did while the people wept by the waters of Babylon. Because of Christ, we lift our eyes and embrace God's eschatological vision and imagination for our time, in our time, and that will meet us again at our horizon. On this Founders Day, how can we not see this imagination that was present in those first few Austin African Americans who met with the Reverend John D. Epps and lifted their eyes beyond the experience of racism and white supremacy and segregation uh, in the Episcopal churches and in the surrounding city of Austin. They lifted up their eyes to a different horizon and brought that in time imagination to bear in the present moment and founded St. James. They gathered a few at first, that's true, meeting in people's homes. They offered you see, in a difficult time, a word similar to Isaiah, a word like comfort to the unwelcomed black people of Austin, to the tired and the oppressed. And sure enough, as they did this, their numbers grew. It was an Isaiah exodus moment, if you will, a of Christ-like importance. They raised funds. They shared what they had. There was a goodly number that began to grow like Claude Shackles and others who ministered and led the congregation. And they grew and they grew. And, uh, and I invite you in this moment, you, you know your story, St. James. Think of the names 
that come to your mind, the name of those in that generation who came before you, who came before us and made a way in the wilderness that today we call St. James. I imagine among those names, of course, are James and Bertha Means. Well, not just because Bertha continues with us today and reminds us in herself of St. James' first generation, but because Bertha and James were part of that generation who were voices crying in the wilderness. And then we hear the voices of the first generation that understood the call, vocation of wilderness prophecy who defined it as bearing a firm moral foundation uh, that was built upon hard work and had an entrepreneurial nature to it and included regular church attendance, but also charitable works inside the congregation and outside in the community and had a, a, a dedication to education. These were the visions, the eschatological visions for St. James in those early day. There was no energy for ignorance, but active participation in life be lived in and outside the church. The community was as important as the church itself. The voice in the wilderness, that was St. James, calling people to a home where none other was provided, it was indeed a voice needed by all people, especially not the white straight community, a voice without bitterness, a, a, bo a voice did not echo, that did not echo moral righteousness. St. James was to be, though, a bold voice in the community and wider city of Austin. St. James embodied, if you will, God's activist roots founded in Abraham's journey in the midst of a journey of Israel and Egypt. Uh, the, the, the words of Isaiah during the Babylonian captivity, God's activist roots and innate willingness uh, to forgive two things which are embodied in the person of Jesus. Today, St. James continues to teach us lessons to shape the community welcoming every kind of person through a radical love for each other. St. James has become the embodiment of, uh, of Isaiah's comfort, if you will, an embodiment of Christ's ministry of welcoming and emancipation, an embodiment of sacrifice and prophetic eschatological end-time imagination. On this day, this Founder's Day, we look back uh, in order to look forward and to the horizon where many a generation has already led. We ourselves embody together St. James, you see, embodies a struggle that continues that people of every kind, but especially the silenced, those marginalized, those victimized, beaten and broken, the abused, those who hold on to the godly promise of a new heaven and earth that they, together with us, might find a new home. A new home in the church, yes. A new home in the Episcopal church, yes. A new home in the Austin churches, yes. But a new home in St. James specifically. You see, you embody the struggle. You embody the hope where there is no hope. You embody love for the loveless. You embrace the lonely, you are food for the hungry. You are shelter. You are shelter for the homeless. Today we echo. We echo the thoughts of those who came before us. We remember them on this day. And we know. We know from their great narrative, but also from our own at St. James that God looks beyond our thoughts and God sees our needs and God provides. So we, like the generations before us, lift up our eyes 
to the horizon where God meets us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.